Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben. I'm the controversial cyclist and I'm a massive sea nut but it takes a sea nut to know a fucking sea nut and on this channel we out cycling sea nuts and what I mean by that because a lot of people say what is a cycling sea nut? Well, it is delving into the part of the cycling industry which is motivated by brand, not positioning, but brand advertising through using YouTube reviewers. I don't call them YouTube reviewers anymore. They are influencers and they are there to do, they are marketing individuals, intermediary uh, intermediates that are there to sell you the products which are shielded upon you through complete bullshit, complete lies and complete fucking fake data if ever they bother to fucking put any data on. Now, who are we covering today? Well, we are back knocking on the door of Grant from GC fucking performance. We're going to knock on the door, wake him up and wake that motherfucker up from under his bridge. The troll that sleeps under the bridge, the ginger troll, Grant. Right. I did say this in my last channel. He's in bed with BMC and he scratches their, or they scratch his back and he scratches their back. And this is fucking woeful. I can't believe it because they just give me more and more fucking content to cover these fucking clowns on. Now, there are people there that obviously really, really fucking like Grant and believe that he is the most, he's as honest as the day is long and he's some sort of fucking ginger messiah. You are so fucking seriously mistaken, it's ridiculous. And this is the last video I'll make on it on this subject of proving to you that Grant is a paid promotion fucking spokesperson for whoever's paying him. He does not test the equipment, number one fact. Second, has he, well if he hasn't tested the equipment, he hasn't got the experience to give you the view that he's giving you when he's saying that he has ridden it for a week. He's fucking lying. He hasn't ridden it for a week, okay? So there again, he's lied to you. These products are around about fourteen dollars or $15,000. Go and figure, guys, okay? If you don't know, that's around about £13,000, and that's probably about 14,000 14, euros. Are you fucking telling me you're going to go out and you are going to go and spend 14,000 euros on a push bike you're going to ride once a fucking week and actually just do it on the whim of some ginger fucking troll bag that hangs out under a bridge. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> you know, and I wouldn't do it on what the back of BMC is saying either because they're pretty nefariously crap. And let's dissect the complete bullshit. I'm not going to make you watch all of it because, like I say, no expense was spent making these videos, but no expense is, make, is spent making this ginger fucking trolls videos either. So let's be sure about that, okay? And he's not honest about that either. Going into this, not much research needs to be done, much like ginger troll hasn't, because there is nothing to fucking tell you other than he is fucking lying, okay? And I'm going to highlight factually where he's fucking lying. Also, the actual tech that's debatable with BMC, I'm going to highlight a bit of that on how he explains it. And it's complete fucking waffle. Going through that, we'll wrap the video up to the point where he has absolutely fuck all else else to say other than reading off a spec sheet, and I'm not gonna put you through that either. But anyway, let's cover Grant without further ado from GC Performance, bang for buck, the ginger troll bag, and let's wake the motherfucker up from under the bridge. Let's go. 2024 BMC Team Machine R01 Model 2, size 56, weighing at 7.25 kgs and in pounds, 16 pounds, two ounces. That is with these DT Swiss 62 arc wheels right here. Stay tuned to after video. We have a free bias on test on those wheels are right there. And it's a dual sided four eye power meter, left and right side. Oh. Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. And today I have for you guys the brand new 2024 BMC Team Machine R001 and a Model 2 in a size 56. And this bicycle weighs, oh sorry, weighs right in around 7.2 kilos. And it retails for $14,000. And that is with some deep dish aggressive uh, DT Swiss Arc 1162 millimeter wheels, and this bicycle right here is a race machine. In today's video, we'll go over everything this bicycle is specced with, talk about a little bit of the features that they went ahead and developed and designed this bicycle for. 
points on the bicycle as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy. So starting off with this bicycle, BMC worked in collaboration with Red Bull to go ahead and make this bicycle to make it as fast as possible. And they call it their do-it-all bicycle. It looks like an aero bicycle, but still comes in right around sub seven kgs. And that's with a pretty heavy pair of wheels on there. You put on any today's modern wheel sets that are a 50. Well, it's not sub seven kgs. So that's, there's the first lie there completely, okay? It's not sub seven kgs. He's just showing you it's 7.2 kgs with those wheels on. So there's number one fucking big fat lie for you. I'm sure sub means below. I'm sub zero, below zero, you know, ginger fucking lying prick. 50 front or 50 50 front uh, that still have aero qualities that are in that 1300 gram, 1300, 1350 gram wheels. This thing will easily be 6.8 kilos, no questions asked in there. Uh, this model right here comes with a dual sided Durace power meter. But this bicycle was developed to go ahead and put you into a very fast racing position. You guys can go ahead and tell. With the okay, so the change of wheels itself is just more money. It's fucking hocus pocus. Is it to say that you're going to be faster? The actual relevance of this, like these fuckers will sell you all the time. Why are they selling you more, less weight when the, five minutes ago they're selling you more aero and you don't need to lose weight? So whatever fucking tune comes on the iPod, whatever way they want to spin it out to you, as long as you're spending more money and the most money possible and more bang for fucking buck in their pocket and less bang for buck in out of your pocket, they will fucking say anything. Do you understand? Blatant face lie, first of all. Secondly, contradictory fucking word soup. It means nothing to go into anything. There's nothing there at all. Handlebars are developed by BMC. These are their own ICS um, cockpit system up here. It's a 36 upper for the hoods and a 42 flared down the bottom, meaning that when you're up in the hoods and you're riding, that's your main area. They want to put you in the most tucked in aero position as possible to go ahead and make this thing as fast as possible as well. And you guys can also see those flared out front fork legs on there. The reason behind that is that they want to drive to go ahead as soon as the wind goes ahead and hits this front wheel, it wants to hit this front fork and kind of go around your body because the biggest drag on the bicycle is going to be your body itself. So they want to go ahead and put that airstream away from the body, push away from the rider itself and try to make this bicycle as aerodynamic as possible with you on top. Okay, so more nefarious information. So let's dissect that a bit there. Whether this is coming from BCM or whether it's coming from Grant or whether it's coming from both of them and they just believe all the fucking waffle and the bullshit that they're saying. is The fact is this, is that that fucking gap's going to need to be a lot, lot bigger, like you see in the Lotus bike, for that to actually really happen. Again, this bike is not fucking cheap. You know, you're looking at $14,000. This is ridiculous. $14,000, $15,000. So you do expect those aero gains to be fucking real. I would, okay? So yes, we can't get the track cycling 15 grand for a frame Lotus bike, maybe effect, but that is no way near. Just to prove this point, let me show you what the Lotus bike looks like. In the... Okay, so here we are, we're back. You could see, now take a look at this Lotus bike. Absolutely mind-blowing. Look at the gap that it needs to achieve with that tri track cyclist on to get the gains or for this to work properly. That gap is fucking monstrous and it works brilliantly. So how well BMC are gonna be able to do that without actually negotiating how wide that gap's got to be between the wheel itself and the gap of the fork so the rider can fit inside that fucking space. Now your usual fat fucking barrister or fat fucking accountant or fat dentist or whatever the fuck you wanna be that's gonna usually buy this bike who's radically unfit but's got lots of money is not gonna fucking fit in the space that's in the BMC. It's milliscule, it's not gonna do hardly anything. This was made for ultra fit track cyclists and they do obviously fit in that fucking space. You know, the body flow can work around the flow of the body. And even look how wide it has to be for super fit, lean, green, you know, absolutely track grinding machines. I fucking arrest my case there on that. Okay, we're back with Grant. Let's see what more bullshit he can speak. Dynamic as possible with you on top as well. They also carried over some of the new UCI rules with this three to one deep dish, I'm sorry, deep section right here for this front head tube, taking up as much exposed carbon as possible and trying to make the hole as little as possible here as well. Same for the bottom bracket, you guys can see here, this is. Okay, please correct me if I'm wrong as well, get in the comment section, but I'm under the assumption that BCM no longer have a pro team or pro tour ride, okay? They are not sponsoring any pro teams anymore. Please correct me if I'm wrong, I think that they're not, okay? So, but again, 
featuring on the UCI at top level. If BMC are not out there, they haven't got a Pro Tour team ride, I'm afraid, you, what are you paying 14 grand for? Because that's a fucking lot of money. And again, if it's all about the, you know, pro teams want to use it, they'll put their money where their mouth is. This is real. This is what this is. They haven't even got a fucking Pro Tour team ride. Okay, that's in the men's. That's the most important. I'm sorry about that, guys. Sorry to be picky, but that is fucking important when you're spending that amount of money. It would be to me. At least fucking prove it to me through those things. The biggest and most carbon fiber bottom bracket they put on a bicycle for a road bike. Again, biggest and most carbon fiber bracket. What the fuck does that even mean in English? This I am unscripted. This is me taking this off the top of my fucking head. He's scripted. This ginger fucking bearded freak show is scripted, okay? That's fucking piss poor. No one's putting any effort into this at all. No one, okay? And the reason I've come back and done this again is that there's so many naysayers for Grant and arse lickers and fucking tribal fucking, you know, drones that just don't believe what I'm saying. This guy is a marketed ginger fucking shill. I want to use as much carbon fiber here as possible. One, to stiffen up this bottom area. Uh, for lateral stiffness, but two, again, to go ahead and make this hole here in the middle of the bicycle as small as possible. Because again, uh, we want to go ahead and make this bicycle an aero machine. You'll see a ton of these people riding these things and pro calipers, um, even on climbing stages. I mean, the bicycle just does everything so well. To have an aero machine like this be around seven kilos, and you can choose what wheel depth you want there, it's a nice, nice uh, option. Very, very skinny seat stays. Go ahead and make the bicycle compliant. A lot of people think because these bicycles are so uh, aero, they're going to be very, very uh, harsh to ride. The vertical stiffness is not going to be as good. I got to ride this bicycle for a week. The rear stays on here and make this bicycle very compliant and also they're low, so it's gonna add a little bit more. Okay, so he says he's got to ride this bicycle for a week. Why the fuck doesn't he show us? Why did he not take any footage as a bike reviewer of him riding the fucking bicycle? This isn't a unboxing, this isn't an opening, this isn't him taking it out of the crate, this isn't a first review, you know, unboxing video. This is his review of the bike. 14 fucking grand, he just expects you to come and drop because he's got a waffle load of bollocks about it. And I'm just hearing shit, complete shit. Stuff that completely contradicts for itself. Oh, look at that big gap there. That's so the fucking flow of this and it deflects around the rider. Da -da 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 -da. But look at this part here. They've made the frame with the smallest fucking internal diamond as possible they haven't it's fucking massive look at the hole there it's fucking huge it's the same as most bikes are now it's no different again massive fucking price tag for the fucking stamp or the fucking brand sticker that's on the side of the frame Flex the bike, which is nice there for vertical compliancy. And also the seat post, the brand new seat post for this year is worked around to go ahead and make the bicycle lightweight and also smooth. But the, the, the whole overall design, I think the BMC Team Machine R is one of the most sexy in terms of aesthetics on the bicycles out there on the market. I mean, the bicycle just screams fast. It looks really good. This is their Model 2 with the Durace model that's 14 grand. It kind of has this maroon color red. It's my first time seeing in person. Okay, in my opinion, but... Let's do the let's do this. Have a look at other bikes. Remember, if you are listening to this guy and you follow him and you're one of his fucking martyrs, well, you're probably gonna spend the money any anyway. But look at the other bikes in the sector, the other semi-aero bikes. It's not really full aero, I'd say now. That's semi-aero bikes. Look at the other bikes from the other brands, they all look the fucking same. There's very, very little difference in them, okay? You can't split between them. So how one looks sexier than the other is beyond me, is, is, is fucking beyond me, you know? It's like a brown maroon color that looks really slick. Uh, I like it a lot. You have these two kind of pinstripes here. Very, very cool. But without further ado, let's get into all the specs on this bike. So starting off with the handlebar in here. This is BMC's own carbon fiber handlebar in here. It's a one-piece barn stem. Okay, so now Grant is just going to show you the spec sheet for the whole fucking bike and and he's going to spend like the next seven minutes of his video to do it. So I'm not going to fucking put you through that. Let's speed forward as we go forward and let's see and pick up different points. Remember, this is unscripted. I'll just pick it up as it goes. Aaron's inside there as well, which is always nice. Um, but again, I like these wheels a lot. Aesthetically, they look nice, but they are kind of older. Um, internal width is kind of older model. I don't know exactly what they are. The depth of them is a, is a pretty big aggressive depth. You definitely get away with like a 50 on here. And also the weights, these are. 
Okay, so he can tell you everything about that, but he doesn't know much about the wheels, okay? So you're spending 14K, he can't give you that information. Maybe you can get it from somewhere else, but he does say fair play to him that they're an older model. Okay, thanks for being honest. You shouldn't try and shill them as being brand fucking new and top spec and top fucking tech for your 14K. Now, what he said there is it, which is shocking, you're spending 14 grand for a bike, 14,000 US dollars for a fucking bicycle, okay, and they have a low internal width. Now, we all know, apparently, and we've all been sold that the technology here today is a deep dish, you know, the wider the better of the wheel, that means in every area. So, that means the width, okay, and the height of the wheel, and that's what they're teaching us for aero, okay, aero wider is better all over, right, that's it. You know, there's no middle ground on this. There's no tech. They're just telling you that. And that's what it is. Well, this obviously contradicts that. They're nice and fucking high. So you've got the height of the wheel. You've got the dish of the wheel. But actually, they're skinny as fuck in the width. Go figure this. How is this, you know, cutting edge technology? A heavy wheel set for today's day and age. It's a 1600 gram wheel set. So you, again, like I said, you put a pretty modern wheel on here on this bicycle. You can definitely get in the underneath the sevens stock like this. You Right, okay, so this is absolutely ridiculous. You're pay you are paying pro bike, and when I mean, I mean pro Peloton bike prices that they are able to use at 14 grand, $14,000. You should be able to go and buy an off the peg fucking professional Peloton bicycle that's used at World Tour level, okay? They are dating or specking in this, uh, uh, as he's saying it, old, heavy set of wheels, okay? So after your frame set, the next thing to change that's going to make you go fast are the wheels. Or maybe they're just as useful together. They sort of work hand in hand with each other. No, not so much your group set, as long as it's reliable and it's not jumping and it's fucking tuned properly. It isn't the group set that's going to save, um, that's going to save you time, make you faster and the watts. It's the wheels and the frame set, okay? They are the most fucking important parts of the bicycle. And it comes with, in his own words, a, a meh pair of wheels for 14k um but let's also look at what he's choosing to do with this as well is is if you do look into going aero and what you're being told is true he's now contradicting himself because actually weight is not always an object as long as you are on a flat or a rolling course because you can negotiate that as long as you haven't got massive side wind so if you are in quite still air and you live in quite a flat environment your aero will work with you, not against you. So it's very, very useful. So at 7.2 kilos, we've now been taught with the tech that that's not an issue. You can still maintain and keep speed. So in all honesty here, he's making him sound, himself sound either extremely experienced or one of the you know old school where everything has to be lighter because it's better. Well, we, we've realized with decent aerodynamics, and that's why we were told the bikes got fucking heavier, is that there was as much energy saving, if not more, to a heavier bike that's more aerodynamic. So as a presenter himself, and as his own fucking education goes, you know, you're asking yourself now, what is real, what isn't real, and how much is Grant really experienced enough in his own fucking education? And how pinpoint and up to date is he to actually sell you these fucking products, even though he lives, breathes, and works in the cycling industry and he's got over 170,000 subscribers and loads of fucking followers it's bullshit even if that becomes to you know fight with itself in all fairness if he was doing this properly and he was actually wanting to stick to the brand it's actually a deep dish 60 uh wheel which it, at 1600 grams is not a fucking issue or a bike at 7.2 kilos and that's my belief if it's good aero you know, if it's a good aero bike, it's the conditions that you're going to ride it in. That's when it becomes fucking negative or positive. So that's what you've got to ask yourself. What conditions do I ride in? That's your responsibility. But when they shill it and say, well, it doesn't matter in a crosswind, you're just going to be faster anyway. That's bullshit. Oh, you can climb this bike at 7.2 kilos and it's like climbing a, you know, 6.8 kilo bike. That's bullshit. It's not. It's fucking not. It just isn't because the factors of force and the factors of nature are real you know you can't get beyond that especially at the factors of how fast you'll be putting that bike up the hill the arrow isn't going to work it will work against you so so these are all these bits which they all play on and everyone casts or throws out or under the bed all the bullshitters will put all this stuff to sleep 
just to sell you what they want to sell you and they just drivel shit. That is Grant to the T. I shouldn't have to make another video and try and explain this and people come in the comment section, oh, what are you trying to say? He's just a fucking hater of him. He's amazing. He's this, he's that, he's the other. Right, you think he's amazing. I've told you he's not amazing. I don't think he's amazing. I think he's a massive bullshitter and I've proved it to you on these points here, here, here. Please rebut the fucking points that I'm giving you. That's what I'm saying to the naysayers. This is what I'm saying to you. Prove to me what I said in the proof is wrong. That's all you need to do. And then we can have a conversation. Other than that, it's just, oh, my feelings are hurt. Don't have a go at Grant. He's amazing. It's bollocks, okay? And this is the problem with the industry. There's so many people supporting this. And in their support of this absolute bullshit is that you're getting shit bikes for 14 grand. So if they can sell you still a shit bike at 14 grand, pull the fucking wool over your eyes and you're too fucking stupid to realise, that means the trickle down effect is you are not going to get a trickle down effect of positivity. Once you go down to one grand, that next year will be $1,500,000, that bike at a thousand pound. So your entry level bike can go up by 33%, rate of inflation is only nine. This isn't why these bikes have gone up so much because of the rate of inflation. It's a land grab, it's ultimate greed, and what it's doing is it's keeping people out of the fucking sport. So the sport will not grow, it will shrink. It will be like golf, where the tweed motherfuckers, rich elitist pricks that you never want to associate with, will take over, and as soon as they've washed it out and realised they've got to do a bit of work, or they're not interested anymore, they'll run back to golf, or they'll go to horse riding, or they'll go to winds windsurfing or kite surfing or whatever they fucking do next and they will wash everyone out of it not only does it make it unfucking cool it makes it fucking unachievable now my argument in case and which someone said to you what's the point of this channel and this is it the end game is this is to keep cycling in touch of the normal person not make it an elitist sport have an elite area of it which is fine no one drive, no one goes around and, and finds that they can't buy a Dasha because Dasha's now put their prices up to, you know, Dasha cars now start at fucking $35,000. Okay, if you're in America, I don't know if you know what Dasha is. It's a, it's a, it's a budget version of Renault, um, but they actually apparently make great cars. Now, they've got a very good market and they hold that market very, very well. In the bike sector with what we're struggling with, with the Chinese coming in, but not really being able to get a foothold, and I mean cycling now. If you have a look at the motorcycle sector, which is something that, you know, actively I've ridden motorcycles all my life, and I'm very aware of what's happening within that sector, is these Chinese brands have made decent products, and now they're attempting to fight the big boys. They've got distribution set up, and now... The fucking Jack Big Four are shitting themselves. Harley Davidson are shitting themselves. And this is what we need in the bike industry. I can go and pick up a fucking decent 650cc motorcycle and the equivalent difference in the reduction of price, which uses the same engine as the Kawasaki from CF Moto, okay, the reduction in the price is 40%. That is getting people into motorcycling and it's keeping it achievable and obtainable. Guys, that is the idea of this fucking channel is to say to you, do not take this fucking bullshit, fucking come out against it because YouTube and YouTube cycling and being fed that the entry level into a push bike to get you on the road now is 5,000 fucking dollars is bullshit. Okay, it's complete bullshit. And I want to stand by that. And I'm quite passionate about it. So thank you for getting to the end of this one. Grant the troll that lives under the fucking bridge has been outed. The ginger fucking ninja has a ginger shiller has been absolutely disseminated. Do not listen to his bullshit. Thank you for all the support. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Uh, if you want to see a decent channel that's done well with kit that's being sold well, go to Joe from China Cycling. I do not get any money for any of this and I've got no interest from doing it. Look at how he's done his last review of the wheels. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal what he talks about. The testing from a guy who's actually got a marketing background and works within these brands and is not a pro cyclist or does not come from a training background is phenomenal. It's really good. I thought it was excellent. Very, very good testing. Um, and 
and the transparency, and I use that word not that often, that he, that he talks about is very, very good. And like he said, he's got skin in the game. It's in his interest. He deals with the returns. He deals with the brands. They are being sold from his shop. He doesn't want a load of shit to go to you. Grant's got no fucking interest in that. So be aware of all these things, please. Be very fucking aware before you start shelling out money on shit that you don't fucking need or that is unproven. And even if you do go to loads of places, be very aware of the context of what this person or the YouTuber that's talking to you about the way they present it. Guys, I'm here to try and save you money, open your eyes a bit and actually stop the fucking absolute elitism that's running through road cycling at the moment because it will end road cycling, in my opinion. People are getting very switched off from this and they will not stay and they will not go through that brilliant experience of cycling on the road, fast bikes. That should be achievable for everyone, and especially the kids coming through that could be ultra talented. Thank you for getting to the end of this one, guys. Thanks for the support. Uh, ciao for now.